What's up, amigos? Welcome to this episode on Stable Diffusion. We're going to explore some of the most fundamental tools and properties that you need to know to start creating your own AIR. And remember, life is truly a gift. Make it count. Once you're in Stable Diffusion, let's quickly go over the main tabs. The first one is text to image. And this is where you can generate an image from the prompt. The next one is image to image, and you can use an image as a reference along with your prompt to generate a new image. Next, we have PNG info, and this is helpful to retrieve the metadata of images that you have generated to reuse in other images. For example, we can click here. This is an image that I've generated and it loads all that metadata and I can reuse it to generate other images. Next, we have settings, and these are the settings for the web UI. And we have extensions, and this allow you to install add-ons such as ControlNet, which we did in the previous episode. Now, last but not least is this dropdown, the Stable Diffusion Checkpoint. And this is where you can switch between the different models that you have in Stable Diffusion. If you don't see your model, you can hit refresh. And just simply, for example, we can go to Protogen V22 and we're ready to use a Protogen 2.2 model. Let's do a quick rundown of text to image. First and foremost is a prompt. And this is where you'll type your description of what image you want the AI model to generate. Writing good prompts goes a long way in generating quality images. There is a structure and technique for writing good prompts that the text to image model can understand. But to dive deep into prompt engineering is a separate video in itself. Hopefully I'll be able to do it. To keep it simple, the cardinal rule is to be detailed, specific, and use keywords. Also, the order of the words is important. Below the prompt is a negative prompt. And this is where you can type what you do not want to include in an image or if you want to remove something. It's very powerful when used correctly and think of it as an extra set of controls. Down here, we have the width and we have the height. And this is where you specify the size of the output image. Since Stable Diffusion was trained on images 512 by 512 pixels, and in general, these dimensions will provide the best quality and composition, try to stick at or near the 512 by 512 resolution, a one-to-one -one ratio or multiples of 64. Once you're more advanced, you can play around with the width and the height. And remember, you can always use the upscaler to increase the resolution. Also, increasing the width and the height increases the time to generate the image as well. Next, we have the sampling method, and this is where we can select the type of algorithm to use for the denoising process. The key to stable diffusion is to experiment, amigos. In general, I've been using Euler A, Euler, DPM 2M Keras, and DPM SDE Keras. Now, a little tip, some of these have a tooltip. If you hover, it'll give you a tooltip. If you go to DDIM, it says it's best at in-painting. Now, different models will work better with certain sampling methods, so take that into consideration. Next, we have sampling steps, and this is the number of times to diffuse your image. The AI makes several passes and modifies or improves the picture with each step. The higher the step, the longer the time it'll take to generate the image. A good starting value is between 20 and 30. After a certain value, you'll tend to find little improvement or change. Next, we have the CFG scale for classifier free guidance. And this is how much the image will follow your prompt. A lower value in stable diffusion will ignore the prompt and make its own interpretation. A higher value keeps your image closer to your prompt. We can go all the way from one to 30. However, seven, a value of seven is the default. And I recommend always starting at a value of seven. The next parameter is seed, and think of it as the unique ID for an image. A value of negative one means that it'll randomize or generate a new image every time you hit generate. Once you find a look that you like, you can lock or reuse the seed number to refine the look of your image. You do so by clicking on this recycle button. Batch count allows you to generate more than one image at a time. Some people like to generate four, I stick with just one. Tiling allows you to create seamless patterns. 
and restore faces is a post-processing method to correct faces. I recommend checking this box when generating images with faces. If you're doing it for the first time, simply go to the settings, go to face restoration, make sure that you have code former checked and it says zero equals maximum effect. Right now is between zero and one. We can go to zero, apply settings, and go to text to image, and just make sure that it is checked. Hop over to the image to image, and along with a prompt, negative prompt, and an image that we can upload, we can create a new image that follows the same look of this reference image. Now, if we scroll down, you'll find that we have all the same properties as in the text to image with the addition of two more. We have resize mode and we have the noising strength. This is perhaps the most important setting in image to image. It tells the AI how much noise to give stable diffusion to generate a new image based on the image reference you're using. A low value and it sticks very close to the reference image, a high value and it starts getting creative, and generating an image farther away from your reference image. Think of it as how much creative liberty you're allowing the AI model to use. Typically, anywhere from 0.3 to 0.8 is a good blend between the style you're going for, but still based on your reference image. But now with ControlNet, you can get away with higher values, yet stick with the same pose or composition of your reference image. And resize mode is used when your reference image and the size of the output have different aspect ratios. Just resize will stretch or squeeze the image to fit the new size. Crop and resize keeps the same aspect ratio and will crop if necessary. To be honest with you amigos, I stick with the same aspect ratio so I don't have to mess with the resize mode. Head over to InPaint and we'll upload an image really quick and InPaint allows us to draw in a certain area of our generated image. And this will tell the AI only to generate in that area. This is helpful for fixing faces, eyes, or certain parts of the image that you want to fix. We can also upload a black and white map. You can see mask. This is the image and this will be for the mask. Now uh, let's go over to the extras. This is an image that I've already uploaded. And this allows us to scale up the resolution. This will scale it up by a factor of four. We can go all the way up to eight. We have two different upscalers that we can use. We can harness the benefits of both. Let's go over a couple of these. R-E-S-R-G-A-N is good for photographs or realistic paintings. Anime, obviously for anime, which is the one that I would use for this example. And then you have Swing IR, which is a good multi-purpose scaler. Once you make your selection, just hit generate. Don't click away, amigos. In the next episode, we'll combine all that we've learned so far and start creating AIR with some practical examples.